Chapter 1531. This was truly a wonderful feeling for Aning. To him, all of these descendants were like a massive blessing from the heavens that had fallen right onto his lap. He had lived for many years and no longer cared about many things, but he still held family in very high regard. I, I'm a little stumped. I'll have to report this to my family, Yuan and Yui said in a dumbstruck manner. Of course, I'll come with you. I really want to see them as well, Aming immediately said in an excited voice. After suddenly learning that he had so many descendants, he naturally wanted to see them for himself now. Yuan and Yui took a deep breath, and after her initial period of shock, she finally calmed down a little. She recalled that when Aming had laid his hand on her shoulder, she hadn't felt a best to him. Was this a result of their bloodline connection? She, she was appraising Aming with a rather hesitant expression. I'm sorry, senior, I didn't mean to attack you earlier. Aming took a glance at him, then turned to Yuan and Yui. Who is he to you? Before Yuan and Yui had a chance to reply, she, she answered in her stead, I'm her boyfriend. Aming pursed his lips in response. You should have picked Wuling instead. He's nowhere near Wuling's level. Shi Shi instantly became extremely flushed upon hearing this, but he had no retort to offer. He had the confidence to compare himself with anyone else, but he knew that Wuling was indeed far beyond his reach. Yuan and Yui shook her head in response. I think he's great. Shi Shi was struck by the urge to burst into tears upon hearing this. A warm and soft, yet firm grasp then closed itself around his hand, and he hurriedly held onto her hand as well. Aming suddenly burst into laughter. I was kidding. You're an interesting little guy, but your martial soul doesn't seem to be fully developed. I'll help you with that later. Shi Shi faltered slightly upon hearing this. What was that supposed to mean? Aming continued. Your martial soul is the extremely rare space time dragon, right? I can sense that you've only grasped the spatial facet of your martial soul, but haven't attained any mastery in the area of time. You must master both facets of your martial soul to fulfill its full potential. Shi Shi's eyes immediately lit up. Thank you for your guidance, senior. He was a smart man, and he knew that this was an opportunity he couldn't afford to miss. Tang Wulin hadn't said anything, but judging from the respect he was displaying toward Aming, this man was most likely a limit duo. Every member of Shrek's seven monsters was working hard to improve. Tang Wulin was progressing at a rapid rate that made it seem impossible to catch up to him. But that didn't mean everyone was going to stop trying. Shishi possessed twin martial souls, but his family didn't have much of a powerful background, so it could be said that he was already the most powerful being in the history of his family. Shrek Academy had exceptional teachers and mentors, but his martial soul had never been seen before, so no one could help him find the path that belonged to him. Yue's Hang Yu had the support of the Holy Angel Clan, and after two awakenings, his cultivation rank had far exceeded Shishi's. Yuan and Yui also possessed two ultra powerful martial souls, as well as exceptional aptitude. Wei Yuzinglin was the hardest worker among them all, having already attained the sword soul. Shu Lizzie's understanding of the power of destruction was developing further and further, and he wasn't even supposed to specialize in battle. The control abilities of Xu Shao and Star Wheel Staff was also becoming more and more powerful, and due to the special nature of her mutated martial soul, she was able to cultivate extremely quickly at night by absorbing the power of Starlight. As such, even though Shishi was constantly doing his best, he still felt like he was lagging behind. Hence, he was naturally ecstatic to have met a powerful being well versed with the powers of the space-time dragon and willing to instruct him. The atmosphere became slightly awkward at this point, and Aming scratched his own head in a rather anxious manner. He was actually even more nervous than Yuan and Yui. Even though he had lived for countless years, this was the first time he had faced such a situation. He hadn't experienced the process of becoming a father and grandfather, he had become an ancestor right away. As such, he had no idea how he was supposed to communicate with his descendants. But it was clear from his expression just how genuinely fond of Yuan and Yui he was. By the way, Yuan and Uncle Eming says he has a way to resolve your fallen angel martial soul issue without harming you. Tang Wulin said, breaking the awkward silence. She, she was even more elated than Yuan and Yui herself to hear this. Really? That's fantastic. Tang Wulin passed his gaze toward Eming, who repeated the same thing that he had told Tang Wulin once before. Tang Wulin hadn't disclosed this information himself as he wanted to give Eming the opportunity. It could be said that this was the main concern for the Yuan and family at the moment. And after hearing what Eming had to say, Yuan and Yui burst into tears. These weren't tears of joy, they were tears of sadness for her mother. If her mother had encountered Eming, she wouldn't have suffered such a tragic fate. Don't cry. Erming immediately began to panic and was at a loss for what to do. Yuan and Yui shook her head and said, Thank you, thank you so much. Erming sighed. Fate really works in tragic ways sometimes. If our divine realm hadn't disappeared, there's no way that a cursed demonic plane would have dared to invade our plane. I'm sure the divine realm will return someday, and when that time comes, all of those bastards looking to invade will be taught a painful lesson. I can't help your mother, but perhaps I can help your father recover his powers. Yuan and Yui's eyes immediately lit up upon hearing this. Really? Is it not too late? Erming replied, I haven't met him yet, but he's still a descendant of mine. The main objective isn't to treat his current physical condition. Instead, it's to reignite the will to live in his heart. As long as we can do that, treatment shouldn't be much of an issue. He was once a title duo, so he has a good foundation. Soul masters who make it to the title duo level are acknowledged by the laws of the plane to a certain extent. Otherwise, how do you think you humans can become so powerful? Hence, there's still hope. However, you have to be the one to reignite his will to live. Yuan and Yui nodded firmly in response. Tang Wulin's heart was also filled with elation as he listened to their exchange. After the conclusion of this jouster spouse, I'll accompany you back to your family. I'll sever your connection with the demonic plane in front of your grandfather so your family can rest assured. Then see if we can heal your father. I'll ask my godmother to come along as well. There's no better healer than her on this continent. Yuan and Yui didn't say anything in response, but she was nodding with tears in her eyes. The joust for a spouse event continued as planned, but due to the lengthy duration of the competition, its popularity was gradually beginning to wane. Meanwhile, the Spirit Pagoda was already making final preparations. It was undoubtedly the case that the final selection Yuna was going to make was still going to be a huge spectacle that would raise the popularity of the event to new heights. After a few rounds of the round robin stage, the favorites for all the groups had already emerged, and aside from their matches, the other matches garnered very little attention. During the next few rounds, Tang Wulin didn't encounter much resistance. After all, he was simply too powerful, and all of his opponents were brushed aside with ease. Chapter 1532 there were many people currently speculating that Tang Wulin could be the one to progress from the third group, as opposed to Kai and Yu's Hangting. During the year of the Spirit Hall 20,000 years ago, the Blue Lightning Tyrant Dragon Clan was one of the six founding families of the Spirit Hall. The clan had kept a low profile for many years, but Ilongyu was single handedly forging a new resounding reputation for the clan. Over a month quickly passed by, and Tang Wulin lived a very routine life, consisting of heavenly refinement, cultivation, and fighting in matches. Gu Yuna hadn't come to find him, and nor had he tried to seek her out, but he had been working even harder in his cultivation ever since the day she left. Zen Hua was a very strict teacher, but he had already approached Tang Wulin on three separate occasions, urging him to take more time off. This was sufficient testament to just how hard Tang Wulin was working. Through his hard work, he had managed to completely master his Dragon Emperor break during this month, and he was even able to control the power of the attack as he pleased. This Dragon Emperor restriction technique was more for control than for inflicting direct damage, and Tang Wulin had even employed the services of Limit Duo to provide guidance to him. At the same time, he had been trying to integrate all of his soul skills during Heavenly Refinement in order to create more Dragon Emperor restriction techniques. However, it was clear that Dragon Emperor restriction techniques weren't going to be that easy to create. His mental manifestation had already stabilized, so most of his cultivation revolved around Heavenly Refinement. Erming was regularly traversing between the Myriad Beast Plane and Bright City, and he was with Yuan and Yui and Shishi
Earth. Rays of bright light began to appear in the air, forming what seemed to be a small world around him. This small world was filled with rainbow light and ferocious giant dragons, as well as lush greenery and boundless oceans. During his cultivation, Tang Wulin had transformed his small room into a mesmerizing world. This was all a result of his mental manifestation. As his spiritual power had improved, Tang Wulin had become more and more powerful. He could sense that he was improving every single day. And compared to back when he had competed in the Trial of Five Gods, he was more steadfast and mature. His foundation had become unstable due to his sudden breakthrough to the title Dulor level, but it had since been completely consolidated through his heavenly refinement, allowing him to further improve his own soul power. Even though he was already at the title Dulor level, his soul power was still progressing at a rate so rapid that it was surprising even to himself. The final round matches for the third and fourth groups are happening today. The third group matches a must-watch battle. Haha, <laughs> Bulunyu is finally going to clash with Pyangyu's Hanjing. The top competitors for the first and second groups have already been decided, and they're both very outstanding. That Lan Foisi from the fourth group already sealed his spot in the final ten two rounds ago. So all eyes will be on the third group today. Who do you think will win? It's hard to say, but I favor Bulunyu. He's crushed all of his opponents thus far almost instantaneously, and his blue lightning tyrant dragon martial soul is so bad as my blood boils just thinking about it. I think Pyangyu's Hanjing will come out on top. Don't forget this event is being held by the Spirit Pagoda. The blue lightning tyrant dragon plan is quite powerful, but surely it can't compare with the Spirit Pagoda. On top of that, Pyangyu's Hanjing's martial soul is the coiling dragon staff, which has an advantage over all dragon type martial souls. I think it'll be very difficult for Bulunyu to win. In any case, I've already bought tickets for the match. They were pretty expensive, but this is an epic match that has to be watched live. Do you have any spare tickets? I want to watch the match live as well. I have a bottle of 35 year old fine wine at home. Would you like to taste it? No way. I'm not selling. Resale ticket prices have spiked through the roof, but I'm not budging. This could well be a once in a lifetime opportunity. Aside from the trial of five gods, this is the match that I want to watch the most. To say that the match between Ulunyu and Pyangyu's hanging was highly anticipated would be a severe understatement. The match was going to be broadcasted on all major television channels, and many were regarding this as the battle that would decide who would win the heart of the Silver Dragon Princess. There were other handsome, powerful beings in the other groups as well, but none were as exceptional as this duo from the third group. Pyangyu Dongfang had arrived in person on the rostrum, and he was accompanied by Du Yuna, as well as some high ranking officials from other major powers in the federal parliament. Pyangyu Dongfang wore a relaxed smile, as if he didn't care much about the outcome of the match, while Du Yuna was as aloof as ever. What do you think of Hanjing's match today, Chairman? An elderly man in a set of luxurious robes asked. Kyangyu Dongfang replied with a smile. Good morning, Vice President. I'm very confident in Sangting's abilities. I can't bear to see Nana marrying someone else. Nana and Sangting have been close for many years. If they can come together, then I'll be able to rest easy and retire. Haha, <laughs> looks like you have no concerns at all. Then again, if you did, you wouldn't have organized this event. The Vice President chuckled. Chapter 1533. Kyangyu Dongfang said, I can't say anything for sure. After all, anything can happen in a battle. However, Sangting has been working very hard and has already taken over many responsibilities from me. On top of that, all of the high-ranking members of our spirit pagoda see great potential in him, so we're all hoping that this event will allow him to mature more quickly. Indeed, experiences like this are invaluable for young people. By the way, I heard you invited the boundless ocean duo for the final day of the event. Has he agreed to come? Kyangyu Dongfang replied with a wry smile. Not yet. Brother Chen has been in a foul mood ever since he returned from the Star Luo Empire. We've been good friends for many years, but I don't want to hassle him. The vice president nodded in response. Who would have thought that the United Fleet would be forced into retreat? By the way, have you received any news about that Tang sect master? Kyangyu Dongfang's brows furrowed slightly as he replied. I'm afraid not. He had thought that Tang Wulin and Yuna's past relationship would have led to him appearing at this just for a spouse event. But that didn't appear to be the case. It was as if the Tang sect really had disappeared. Ever since Shrek City had been raised to the ground, the Tang sect had kept a very low profile. All of its branches had become very withdrawn, and following the declaration that the Tang sect was a treasonous organization, it seemed to have completely vanished. Thus, the general public and all of the major powers had gradually begun to forget about its existence. Only those who were aware of just how powerful the Tang sect was knew that it was not to be ignored. No one had imagined that the Tang sect would suddenly appear on the Star Luo continent, and that the Tang sect master would engage in a trial of five gods. The Spirit Pagoda had attempted to use this against the Tang sect, but this ploy had completely backfired on them. And through the coverage of the trial of five gods, the Tang sect had received an immense amount of popularity. Immediately thereafter, the United Fleet arrived at the Star Luo Empire. Even though there was insufficient evidence, it was clear to everyone who had provided those super weapons to the Star Luo Empire. How had both the Star Luo Empire and those Spirit Empire come into possession of such powerful weapons. The Tang sect was clearly the culprit. Thus, the Spirit Pagoda had exerted its influence to declare the Tang sect as a treasonous organization, triggering much debate in the federal parliament. After all, the Tang sect had made significant contributions to the continent in the past. However, the Tang sect itself simply disappeared as if nothing had ever happened. No one even knew if the new Tang sect master had returned from the Star Luo Empire. Enemies lurking in the shadows were always the most difficult to deal with. So this just for a spouse event was a trap to lure him out, but it seemed to have failed thus far. At the mention of Pang Wulin, Kyangyu Dongfang's smile had faded significantly. Judging from the information he had received from the Star Luo Empire, this was a young man who was not to be scoffed at and had established very close ties with the Star Luo Empire and Spirit Empire. Currently, the Spirit Pagoda was being heavily oppressed in those two empires, and if Tang Wulin were allowed to develop even further, he would definitely be a huge thorn in the Spirit Pagoda's side. He didn't want to see another Atlas Dilu emerge on the continent. Have you heard any news about him? Kyangyu Dongfang asked. The vice president shook his head in response. I'm sure you're well aware of how powerful the Tang sect is. Truth be told, I don't support the decision to declare the Tang sect as a treasonous organization, not because I pity them, but because they're far more difficult to deal with now that they've been forced into the shadows. All our intelligence gathering departments are searching for information, but to no avail. Also, I have a feeling. What is it? Kyang Yu Dongfang asked. The vice president continued, I have a feeling that we'll encounter a lot of obstacles on many different levels in our efforts to bring down the Tang sect. I feel like progress will be very difficult, and that it'll be very difficult to control what happens next. Kyang Yu Dongfang assured, there's no need to be too concerned. While it's indeed troublesome that the Tang sect is hiding in the shadows, this will also make them lose public support. As time passes, they'll be reduced to the lights of the Holy Spirit cult. The vice president gave him a meaningful look. I certainly hope so. Kyang Yu Dongfang made an inviting hand gesture and said, Please take a seat. Yu Yuna had been observing this conversation in silence this entire time, and she could clearly sense that Kyang Yu Dongfang's emotions had fluctuated greatly at the mention of the Tang sect. It was clear that he was nowhere near as confident and assured as he had tried to present himself as. Even the federal government had to be wary of the Tang sect and Shrek Academy as they were too powerful in the past, and Shrek City stood like an independent empire in the Federation. Even though it was a neutral entity, it was a place that no ambitious conqueror wanted to exist, and that was the root cause behind the destruction of Shrek City. However, even though Shrek City had been raised to the ground, the revival of Shrek Academy seemed to have set many things into motion, and this was a reflection of the power of Shrek Academy and the Tang sect. At the front row of an indiscreet corner of the spectator stand sat a young man who appeared to be in his twenties, wearing a set of casual activewear. He turned to his companion with a smile and said, "This will be quite a thrilling match. I bet Kyangyu Dongfang equipped his grandson with his
Academy. We've managed to remain standing even after all these years as we've always assisted one another. Back when the Tang sect was at its weakest, point, Shrek Academy had extended a helping hand. On this occasion, I'm sure that those in the Spirit Pagoda will soon realize that they've underestimated the Shrek Academy rebuild. I really want to see the expression on Kai and Yu Dongfan's face in a few days. Yali couldn't help but burst into laughter. You're an old man already. Why are you still so enthusiastic about these things? Zhang Xin chuckled in response. What can I say? I'm an amorous guy, I guess. Yali shook her head with a slightly resigned expression. I hope Kai and Yu Dongfan will like the surprise we prepared for him. At this point, the spectator stands were completely filled, and there were many passionate fans holding banners with Yu's name on them. Of course, there were more banners with Kai and Yu's hangings name as in a sense. This was his home court, chapter 1534. Lan Foisy was standing beside the competition platform with a cold expression. She didn't go to the resting area as she didn't want to see nor speak to that man. She was a cultured young woman, but for some reason, she could never keep her own temper in check in his presence. Will he win today? Humph, there's no way he'll win. Lan Foisy was viciously cursing a certain somebody in her heart. A chew. In the resting area, Tang Wuling sneezed before casting a resigned gaze outside. There was someone cursing him. With his level of spiritual power, he was able to sense some of the thoughts directed toward him. Kyang Yu's hanging was seated with his eyes closed on a sofa some distance away from him. In reality, all of the other competitors in their group were near spectators as both Tang Wuling and Kyang Yu's hanging had eight victories from eight matches, which meant that no one else had a chance to progress. Having already faced the two of them in battle, all of the other competitors in the group were well aware of how powerful they were. Kyang Yu's hanging's performance had drawn much admiration from them, whereas Tang Wuling inspired a sense of awe and veneration. After all, Tang Wuling had been far more brutal and violent than Kyang Yu's hanging in his matches. This clash between the blue lightning tyrant dragon and coiling dragon staff was going to be a vital battle, and it had been scheduled to be the first match of the day, which was why the entire sports stadium was already packed to the rafters. Everyone was looking forward to this once in a lifetime clash. Both of the competitors were very young yet extremely powerful, and they were clearly on route to reaching the pinnacle of this continent, so it was quite a treat to be able to witness a battle between them. Welcome to the Bright City Sports Stadium. Everyone, I'm sure we've all been waiting for this matchup for a very long time. Indeed, this is a once-in-a-lifetime battle, as well as a clash between the two most powerful competitors in the third group. It's been widely speculated that the likeliest candidate to be chosen by the Silver Dragon Princess will arise from this third group, and I'm sure I don't need to introduce the two competitors for this first battle. Before we begin the match, allow me to remind everyone of the rules of this event. Following this final round of the round robin stage, the top competitor of each group will progress to form the final ten, among which Silver Dragon Princess Yuna will choose one to become her lover. Prior to her selection, each of those ten competitors will have a chance to display what they have to offer her, and they can also present gifts to Yuna to win her heart. The chosen one in the end will undoubtedly be immensely fortunate, and we're all looking forward to seeing who that lucky man will be. Now then, the top competitor of the third group is about to be decided in this upcoming match. Will the blue lightning tyrant dragon stun the opponent with an electrifying display, or will the coiling dragon staff sweep aside everything in its path? Keep your eyes peeled and make sure you don't miss a single detail. Everyone, the commentary successfully stirred up all of the excited spectators, and applause and cheers rang out like a volcanic eruption. The light in the sports stadium began to dim. Even though it was still in the morning, the advanced technology in the stadium was able to simulate a night-like environment. Two pillars of scintillating light then erupted from either side of the competition platform, illuminating a pair of figures that stood at the end of two different passageways. The cheering crescendo to a peak at the side of the two stars of the show. Tang Wuling was standing on the left, while Kai Yu's was situated on the right. And even though they couldn't see each other with the huge competition platform between them, they could sense one another's auras. Kai Yu's was wearing his usual set of white robes, looking very dashing with a bright and light in his eyes. Bu Yu also didn't appear to be any different from his normal self, and his chin was slightly tilted upward as an expression of pride and confidence. Bu Yu, Bu Yu, Bu Yu. Even though there were more banners with Kai Yu's handing's name, there were clearly more people cheering on Yu Yu. The supporters for both sides were beginning to compete with one another, screaming the name of the one they supported with all their might. Let's welcome our two competitors into the stadium. The pillars of light began to move as Tang Wuling and Kai Yu's handing strode onto the competition platform from either side. This was most likely going to be the final battle in this just for a spouse event for both of them. Once they made it into the top ten, Yu would have the right to challenge them to examine their abilities, but there was no guarantee that she would exercise that right. As such, it was very likely that this would be the last chance they would get to display their powers during this competition. Even as Tang Wuling walked onto the platform, his gaze was still focused on the rostrum. Even though he couldn't see her, he could sense that she was there. A faint smile appeared on his face, and he completely ignored Kai Yu's handing as he waved toward the rostrum. At this point, the protective barrier had already risen up, thereby keeping out the voice of the commentator. Wow, look at that! Everyone. Ulan Yu is waiting toward the rostrum with a very confident smile. And what a captivating smile that is. It seems that he thinks very highly of his own chances here. However, a show of bravado like this is a little arrogant. Is he not afraid that he'll leave Yu Yuna with a bad impression? As an event organized by the Spirit Pagoda, the commentator's bias was beginning to show despite the supposed stance of impartiality. Yu Yuna had naturally also seen Tang Wuling smile, and despite how well she knew him, she couldn't understand why he was smiling at a time like this. Even though he was in disguise, she could sense that the smile on Tang Wuling's face was completely genuine. For an instant, she found herself mesmerized by his smile. This was indeed a captivating smile. The reason behind Tang Wuling's smile stemmed from his confidence in Yu Yuna's love for him. In that instant, he sensed the golden dragon scale hanging around Yu Yuna's neck, which was the reverse scale that she had removed back when he was in his golden blood dragon state. That's right, she had constantly been wearing his golden dragon scale, no matter how much she had tried to distance herself from him, she was still unable to deny her own feelings. It was exactly because Tang Wuling had felt all of this that his smile was so genuine and exuberant. His confidence was at an all-time high, and although Kyang Yu's hanging's expression remained unchanged, he was fuming internally at the sight of Tang Wuling's cocky display. Kyang Yu's hanging harassed coldly, and his voice was only audible to Tang Wuling on the competition platform. Tang Wuling's brows furrowed slightly as he finally cast his gaze toward his opponent. Can you shut your noisy mouth? Kyang Yu's hanging said in a cold voice. You can talk trash now, but I'll show you who's more worthy of being her man. Tang Wuling smiled and said, I don't need you to show me that. I already know that it's me. Kyang Yu's hanging chuckled coldly, but offered no response, clearly not wishing to engage Tang Wuling in a war of words. At this moment, the battle was being broadcast all over the entire Duo Federation. The Spirit Pagoda was promoting the clash as much as possible in order to increase the influence of this just for a event. Please get ready. The match is about to begin. The referee declared. At Tang Wuling and Kai Yu's hanging's level, there was nothing to prepare. All of the preparations had already been made prior to the match. Chapter 1535. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, begin. The highly anticipated match finally began. Bluish purple lightning erupted from Tang Wuling's body as thick bolts of lightning rose up into the air. While Kai Yu's hanging raised his right hand to summon his coiling dragon staff, neither of them attacked right away, but both of them immediately summoned their soul rings. This is a clash between auras. Both these competitors are extremely powerful, and even though neither of them has displayed their suit of battle armor, I'm almost certain that they're both three word battle armor masters. That's right, we are going to be witnessing a clash between three word battle armor masters today, and in preparation for this match, our workers have fortified the entire protective barrier to ensure safety. The two competitors on the platform finally sprang into action, and the first to attack was Kai
beautiful family of the spirit pagoda, the Kayangi family possessed an extremely formidable martial soul in the form of the coiling dragon staff, and the true essence of the staff lay in its unyielding nature. It was like an unyielding soul spirit that dared to resist heaven and earth with its own power, and unlike Tang Wuling or Yuan and Zhenshin, who made use of the power of laws to enhance themselves, the staff drew its power from destroying the power of laws. After over 1,000 years and dozens of generations of reflection and improvement, this set of unyielding staff techniques finally took shape, and one could only begin to master these techniques after reaching the title Dulor level. This was because cultivating the unyielding staff techniques required one to combat heaven and earth, which placed one under immense pressure, but every single breakthrough yielded significant improvements. There were nine unyielding staff techniques in total, and even Kayangi Dongfang had only mastered the eighth technique. No one in the history of the Kayangi family had ever mastered that ninth technique, and it only existed in theory. Currently, Kayangi's Hanjing had already mastered five techniques, and this was the first one, battling heaven and earth. Tang Wulin was naturally unaware of all this, but as the coiling dragon staff came crashing down toward him, a hint of surprise appeared in his eyes. He could clearly sense that the surrounding heaven and earth was extremely averse to this attack, but Kayangi's Hanjing was somehow able to make use of this aversion to fuel his own attack, making Tang Wulin feel as if the world were about to collapse around him. He took a step forward and rose up into the air, then took a deep breath before withdrawing his right fist of his own waist. After that, he twisted around, pivoting with his hip, guiding his shoulder to unleash an almighty punch. The punch was very simple and devoid of any fancy techniques, and it looked entirely futile in the face of the gargantuan coiling dragon staff. However, Tang Wulin's fist had turned a translucent bluish purple color, giving it the appearance of a glowing sapphire. As his fist was thrust forward, the surrounding air began to resonate slightly, returned to simplicity. Commentator Fei blurted out, he immediately regretted his statement, but this really was his first impression upon seeing this punch. Boom. The entire heaven and earth tremored violently in the face of their clash, and a figure plummeted out of the sky like a meteorite before slamming down onto the ground, sending huge cracks spreading on the platform in all directions. It was none other than Tang Wuling. Meanwhile, Kayang Yu's Hanging's coiling dragon staff had been repelled upward, and one could clearly see lightning crackling all over its surface. As for Kayang Yu's Hanging himself, he had returned to his original form, but was unable to continue attacking Tang Wuling. They're evenly matched. I Fei yelled in an excited manner, Wu Long Yu was forced back onto the platform, while Kayang Yu's Hanging was most likely paralyzed by the lightning, thereby preventing him from unleashing a follow-up attack. This is truly a once-in-a-generation clash. I would like to direct everyone's attention to the cracks beneath Wu Long Yu's feet. The competition platform has been specially reinforced, allowing it to withstand explosions from all soul missiles below the eighth grade, and the fact that it's been so severely damaged is sufficient testament to just how fierce that last clash was. Tang Wuling's eyes were slightly narrowed, and his body was also trembling slightly as a result of the effect of the coiling dragon staff's aura. In the instant that the clash had taken place, he had sensed an overwhelming will to crush him from the coiling dragon staff, a will that was filled with pride and unyielding stubbornness. This wasn't just a purely spiritual attack; it was battle intent that had been honed through countless battles. As expected, no one could simply stumble upon success by accident. The Kayang family had the power to back up its status, and this was Kayang Hanging's true power. Kayang Yu's Hanging was also quite stunned, just as Ifei had said. His entire body was currently paralyzed. However, the main issue was that during that last clash, he could clearly sense that he had lost control over the power of heaven and earth that he had forced into submission with his unyielding staff intent. And as a result, he was unable to unleash the true power of his battling heaven and earth. In reality, even though the unyielding staff techniques drew its power from destroying laws, it was still a method of utilizing the power of laws. However, it was a more extreme method that involved essentially destroying before enslaving the power of laws. This Ulan Yu really was a formidable foe. After staring at one another for only an instant, Tang Wuling rose up into the air again, while Kayang Yu's Hanging unleashed countless staff projections that crashed down toward him. Chapter 1536 all of the staff projections were completely unpredictable in their trajectories, and not even through the use of spiritual power could one determine where the staff projections were going to strike. A serious look appeared on Tang Wuling's face as he stopped in midair, and bluish purple dragon scales instantly appeared all over his skin, enveloping his entire body before taking on a mirror-like appearance. This was his golden dragon tyrant body that was enhanced by his infernal lightning vine, and at the same time, his dragon's repulse erupted out of his body as a layer of bluish purple light. Boom. Ah. Uh. Wu Long Yu hasn't attempted to evade or retaliate. He's allowed himself to be struck by the coiling dragon staff. He's been swept up into the air, and it seems that he's temporarily lost control over his own body. Hold on. Why has another coiling dragon staff appeared in the air? What a powerful attack! It's even managed to create a dimensional rift. Just as the sound I was describing, right as Tang Wuling was swept up into the air by the coiling dragon staff that was rising up from below, an identical staff appeared up above before crashing down in an even more devastating fashion than the earlier battling heaven and earth. This was the second unyielding staff technique, shaking heaven and earth. Tang Wuling only had time to shield himself with his arms before he was smashed out of the sky, then crashed down onto the ground with a resounding boom, having been completely embedded into the earth from the waist down like a nail. Everyone was stunned by this sudden turn of events. The two of them had appeared to be evenly matched mere moments ago, yet it looked as if Tang Wuling could lose at any moment now. Even had paused in his commentary, he had to speak in Kayang Yu's Hanjing's favor, but as a professional commentator, he was very much looking forward to this battle as well, and he definitely didn't want to see Tang Wuling lose so quickly. Even Kayang Yu's Hanjing himself was rather dumbstruck. In his eyes, there was no way that Tang Wuling would lose so easily. It was clear that he hadn't even tried to block that attack. Just as Kayang Yu's Hanjing was wondering if he had won the match, Tang Wuling's voice suddenly rang out beside his ears. That kind of tickled. Is there more where that came from? He was then greeted by the sight of Tang Wuling leaping out of the ground. Tang Wuling wiped away the blood from the corner of his lips, then made a provoking hand gesture in Kayang Yu's Hanjing's direction. Even Kayang Yu Dongfang was rather stunned to see this. He was naturally well aware of just how powerful shaking heaven and earth was. While unleashing the unyielding staff techniques, Kayang Yu's Hanjing's combat prowess was definitely comparable to that of a hyper However, not only had Tang Wuling withstood the attack, it seems that he hadn't even suffered any substantial injuries. Just how insane was his physical resistance. One had to realize that he still hadn't even donned his battle armor. At this moment, Tang Wuling's heart was filled with excitement. Following that first clash, his body had been paralyzed by the law destructive power of Kayang Yu's Hanjing's battling heaven and earth. However, in that instant, he could clearly sense that the power of laws destroyed by the coiling dragon staff had all surged into his body as if it had found a new home. This wasn't rainbow law, it was the purest essential laws of the dual or continent plane. As the one who had been blessed by the plane, the power of laws naturally had great affinity with Tang Wuling. Under normal circumstances, the power of laws would only allow Tang Wuling to better understand and use the laws of this world. In a sense, the power of laws was the life force of a plane, and even though the plane had offered its blessings to Tang Wuling, there was no way it would bestow its own life force upon him. However, the unyielding staff techniques drew power from destroying laws, and the destroyed power of laws would dissipate after being used instead of being absorbed by Kayang Yu's Hanjing. This was the main floor of the unyielding staff techniques. There was no way it would be acknowledged by the plane. Hence, all of the destroyed power of laws naturally flocked toward Tang Wuling. This was why Kayang Yu's Hanjing had felt that the power of laws he had drawn upon seemed to have disappeared during his clash with Tang Wuling. In reality, it hadn't disappeared. It had simply been absorbed by Tang Wuling. This pure power of laws wouldn't directly enhance Tang Wuling's powers, but it would improve his affinity with the dual or continent plane, thereby assisting him immensely when it came
He would be able to trigger evolution within himself. Through his clashes with Kiangyu's Hanging, Tang Wulin was able to absorb the very thing that even a planar ruler desired, albeit only in small quantities, and it was exactly because of this that Tang Wulin had decided to prolong this battle rather than crash Kiangyu's Hanging as quickly as possible. His physical constitution had been enhanced to an insane level by his congenital secret method and Golden Dragon King bloodline, and that had allowed him to withstand Kiangyu's Hanging's attack. Upon witnessing Tang Wulin's provocative hand gesture, Kiangyu's Hanging's first reaction was incredulity rather than fury. How was it possible that someone had remained largely unscathed in the face of his shaking heaven and earth even without using their battle armor? This simply didn't make sense. Was this guy even a human anymore? How was his defensive prowess this insane? Tang Wulin took a deep breath, and his dragon thumped violently, sending scorching blood essence coursing through his entire body to repress his injuries. Your staff is very weak. He taunted in a mocking voice. He was goading Kiangyu's hanging into attacking so he could continue to absorb more planar laws. A cold light flashed through Kiangyu's hanging's eyes, and he suddenly held his coiling dragon staff directly toward Tang Wulin. The coiling dragon staff began to rapidly expand mid-flight, and the dragon piled onto the staff seemed to have sprung to life as it transformed into a giant white dragon that coiled itself around the staff. The laws around the coiling dragon staff began to twist and warp violently, and as they shattered, they were devoured by the giant dragon around the staff. As a result, the coiling dragon staff expanded even further in size and began to glow brightly, crashing down from above like a massive pillar of light. This was not an attack that Tang Wulin could directly withstand. A sense of peril welled up in his heart, and he immediately sprang away to the side like lightning. However, right at this moment, a burst of powerful suction force erupted from the coiling dragon staff, looking around Tang Wulin like a set of invisible shackles, making him extremely slow and sluggish. Chapter 1537. The giant staff was upon Tang Wulin in an instant. This was the third unyielding staff technique, supporting heaven and earth. Tang Wulin stopped in the air as a loud dragon's roar erupted from his body, and his right arm instantly turned a bluish purple color before being whipped through the air. Lightning God Whip. It wasn't that he didn't want to withstand the attack to absorb the power of laws. The attack was simply too powerful for him to take. Boom. The lightning god whip struck the coiling dragon staff, and Kiangyu's hanging's body suddenly began to glow as it were made of light. All of the shattered laws were reciprocated to him by the coiling dragon staff, and he descended from above before stomping a foot down onto the staff. Even though the lightning god whip had stopped the coiling dragon staff's descent, Tang Wulin felt as if his body were about to shatter, and the laws around him were constantly in a loop of breaking and mending. His body began to absorb these shattered laws, but the powerful suction force of the coiling dragon staff was also reciprocating these laws toward Kiangyu's hanging. All of a sudden, Kiangyu's hanging suddenly folded in the air, and the time around him seemed to have also paused for an instant. This wasn't time reversal; it was time stop. Tang Wulin had used time reversal in the trial of five gods, so he couldn't use it now as doing so would blow his cover. However, due to the improvements he had made in his spiritual power, he was able to control his own spiritual domain with a greater level of precision. As the split second pause took place, Tang Wulin let loose a Cry, and a string of elf thunderclaps rang out around him. The lightning erupted forth as rainbow water force back the coiling dragon staff, and Tang Wulin flew out of the area encompassed by the staff's suction force. Only then did Kiangyu's hangings stomp down onto the coiling dragon staff, which came crashing down, causing the earth to tremor violently. Kiangyu's hangings' entire body had turned a scorching white light, and right at this moment, specks of light also began to appear all over Tang Wulin's body. Those were a series of bluish purple specks of light, which transformed into a suit of sapphire-like battle armor that quickly encapsulated his entire body. This was none other than Tang Wulin's dragon moonsong battle armor. With Tang Wulin's understanding of metal and disguise abilities, it was naturally a simple task to turn his battle armor a bluish purple color. As soon as he donned the suit of battle armor, Tang Wulin's aura took an abrupt turn, and his dragon's repulse became several times more powerful than before, allowing it to keep the suction force of supporting heaven and earth at bay. At the same time, countless of lightning erupted from Tang Wulin's body to form a forest of lightning. This was the first time that Tang Wulin had retaliated. A hint of disdain appeared in Kiangyu's hanging's eyes as scorching white light flashed over his entire body. As expected, in the face of his unyielding staff techniques, his opponent had been forced to use his battle armor first. However, in the next instant, he was suddenly struck by a sense of great peril, and he reflexively took a step backward, upon which his body seemed to have been sucked into the coiling dragon staff. A bluish purple fist then appeared out of thin air before striking the spot where he had been standing before. Under the illumination of the forest of lightning, the coiling dragon staff was made to look even more imposing. Kiangyu's hanging has gained an advantage by forcing his opponent to don his suit of three-word battle armor first. Having said that, Wulong's three-word battle armor is truly a sight to behold. Are those complex patterns or core circuits? Can a suit of three-word battle armor handle so many core circuits? What kind of materials have to be used to facilitate that? This is the first time we've seen Ulongyu's battle armor, and I'm sure the battle will only become more exciting from here onward. As I Fei had expected, Ulongyu wasn't going to lose that easily, but the fact that he had been forced to summon his battle armor first was already a concession. At this point, Tang Wulin had already arrived at the spot where Kiangyu's hanging had been standing before, and he stomped his foot straight down toward the coiling dragon staff. Roar! The giant white dragon immediately unleashed a white breath up toward Tang Wulin. The breath was infused with the power of laws, and the giant white dragon was somehow completely fearless even in the face of Tang Wulin's golden dragon king aura. A hint of a smile appeared on Tang Wulin's face. He had released his battle armor first not because he had actually been forced to. It was just that with his battle armor to protect him, he would be able to take more of a beating. Tang Wulin crossed his arms before him to withstand the dragon's breath, as if he had been caught off guard. His battle armor began to glow with scintillating light, but the dragon's repulse on its surface was quickly melting away. The coiling dragon staff suddenly vanished, and Kiangyu's hanging appeared behind Tang Wulin before sweeping his staff viciously into Tang Wulin's back. As a result, Tang Wulin was sent flying like a cannonball before crashing heavily into the protective barrier into the distance, much to the shock of all of the spectators. However, before he fell onto the ground, a pair of wings spread open on his back, and he performed an agile somersault before flying up toward Kiangyu's hanging. Kiangyu's hanging's eyes widened with incredulity upon seeing this. How did his battle armor possess such insane defensive prowess? It seemed that it hadn't been impacted much at all by his staff strike. Unbeknownst to him, his opponent was none other than one of only two divine blacksmiths on the entire continent. Tang Wulin's dragon moon song battle armor was constructed from soul-refined alloys comprised of a staggering number of metals. So its defensive prowess definitely stood at the pinnacle of all suits of three-word battle armor. The reason why it was so difficult to forge a suit of four-word battle armor for himself was precisely because his suit of three-word battle armor was too powerful. In the spectator's hands, she, she was watching the match in a perplexed manner. Why is boss being so passive? This doesn't make sense. Isn't he really pissed off at that Kiangyu's hanging guy? He was very well versed with Tang Wulin's style of battle, which was extremely aggressive and overflowing with explosive power. And this was the first time he had ever seen Tang Wulin being beaten so comprehensively by someone he didn't even seem to be more than him. Even the matches in the trial of five gods hadn't been this one-sided. Hee hee, you're not very bright, are you? Take a good look. It's not that simple. I'm guessing that Wulin has struck some gold. Those staff techniques are quite interesting. Erming said with a smile as he tossed jerky into his own mouth. Yuan and Yui nodded in agreement. Captain is always making breakthroughs during battle, and this is very much out of character for him, so he must be plotting something. Erming said, I can sense a will to contend with the power of laws from that kid's staff techniques. I can sense the fury of the plane, but it's unable to do anything to him. That's the special nature of his martial soul. It's able to resist the
and that was only enhanced by his Golden Dragon body and Golden Dragon Tyrant body, so his Dragon Moon Song Battle armor leans more toward impact production as opposed to outright defense. For normal Soul Masters, this wouldn't serve much of a purpose, and it could easily result in severe injuries being incurred. However, with Tang Wulin's physical tolerance, this wasn't an issue, and it also allowed his battle armor to withstand more impact. On top of that, even though his battle armor was more focused on impact production, its exceptional materials meant that it still had far superior defensive prowess compared to normal suits of three way battle armor. Aside from powerful beings of Yuan and Zhenchen's caliber, it would be very difficult for anyone else to shatter his suit of three way battle armor. Upon catching a glimpse of the mockery in Tang Wulin's eyes as he flew through the air, a cold look immediately appeared on Kai Yu's hanging face. This was a battle that he took very seriously, and prior to this match, he had rehearsed by battling many powerful beings of the Spirit Pagoda who were also adept at using lightning. However, much to his surprise, it was Tang Wulin's durability that was causing far more of a headache for him than Tang Wulin's lightning abilities. He knew how powerful his own coiling dragon staff was. Even the average hyper duo wearing their suit of battle armor wouldn't dare to take a staff strike from him head on. Yet Yu Yu had withstood his attacks like nothing. Was this guy really a human? On top of that, even though he was very confident in his own suit of battle armor, he was struck by a feeling that Tang Wulin's battle armor was somehow different from his. He couldn't allow this to continue. He had already used three unyielding staff techniques, and not only were they extremely powerful, they were also very taxing to unleash. He had thought that he would be able to crush Yu Yu and couldn't early enter this battle, but it was clear that this plan had already failed. He had only mastered a total of five unyielding staff techniques, and each successive one was more taxing than the previous technique. If Yu Yu would withstand all of those attacks, then Kai Yu's would be left considerably spent and in very bad shape. Kai Yu's had a considerable wealth of battle experience as well. And he immediately made a decision to also don his own suit of battle armor. Specks of platinum light appeared all over his body, and a giant white dragon emerged from his forehead before transforming into a dragon head-shaped helmet that encapsulated his entire head. A suit of platinum battle armor then spread over his entire body, and a pair of huge wings were unfurled on his back. At the same time, his coiling dragon staff also turned platinum color, and the dragon carved onto its surface let loose a thunderous roar as it took on a substantial form. It transformed into a white dragon that instantly swelled to over 30 meters in length, then hovered beneath Kyangu's hanging feet in a still manner, standing atop the white dragon's head with his suit of platinum armor and imposing staff. It had to be said that Kyangu's hanging's current appearance was definitely enough to recount members of the opposite sex. A melodious dragon's roar rang out from Kyangu's hanging's mouth, and a layer of platinum light immediately began to radiate from both his and the giant white dragon's bodies. At the same time, his aura also shifted as a platinum halo with a diameter of around 30 meters appeared on the ground beneath him. This was his three-way battle armor domain. He raised his coiling dragon staff high above his head, and at this point, the staff was already entirely covered in fine platinum dragon scales. Scintillating light radiated from the domain halo beneath his feet, and a massive pillar of platinum light was projected upward. It was very apparent to everyone that he was about to unleash an all-out assault. Tang Wulin spread open his wings and hovered in midair as he adjusted his own aura as opposed to attacking right away. As expected of the Spirit Pagoda's most powerful family, this suit of battle armor and its battle armor domain were both very exceptional. Unfortunately for Tang Wulin, he couldn't use his golden blood dragon domain as it was far too recognizable and would immediately blow his cover. The giant platinum dragon unleashed the first attack, and everything around it took on a scorching white color. It released a breath, and the breath instantly transformed into dozens of smaller white dragons that flew toward Tang Wulin from all directions. Dragon Realm. This was Kyangu's hanging's three-word battle armor domain, and the design for his battle armor stemmed from his family. It hadn't been designed specifically for him. This was the universal three-word battle armor design in the Kyangu family. Incandescent platinum light erupted across the entire competition platform, alongside a burst of terrifying power. And Tang Wulin felt as if he were a small raft on a raging ocean. Right at this moment, a peculiar sensation spread through his entire body, alongside a sense of agitation. This was power that didn't belong to him, and he reflexively looked down at his own wrist. A layer of rainbow light almost instantly erupted from his wrist, following which a rainbow halo was projected from his body. All of the spectators and even Tang Wulin himself were stunned by the emergence of this rainbow halo. This was an enormous halo that contained countless miniature dragon-shaped patterns. And if one were to look closely, they would discover that these patterns depicted countless giant dragons of different shapes, forms, and colors. What was most alarming was the fact that this halo had a diameter of over 100 meters. It was projected onto the ground in an extremely clear manner, and as soon as it appeared, all of the platinum light in the surrounding area melted away like snow under a scorching sun. All of the oncoming white dragons instantly vanished upon coming into contact with the rainbow light, as if they had been assimilated. And at the same time, a series of rather blurry images began to appear around Tang Wulin. Mental manifestation. Kyangu Dong Fang abruptly rose to his feet on the rostrum. As a limit Duluo himself, he was naturally aware of what mental manifestation looked like. It was just that he had never considered that his grandson would encounter a mental manifestation level powerful being in this event. Furthermore, what was that 100 meter domain? A domain of such a massive diameter was unheard of even among limit Duluo. In fact, there may not have ever been a domain of this size in history. On top of that, this domain clearly wasn't just for show. It had nullified Kyangu's hanging's dragon realm with ease. The rainbow light seemed to contain some type of power of laws, and Yuna had also risen to her feet. She stared at the images that had begun to take shape around Tang Wulin, and she couldn't help but throw a hand over her own mouth as an incredulous look appeared in her eyes. There were over 100 images unfolding around Tang Wulin, but all of them were quite blurry, perhaps due to the fact that his spiritual power was still rather lacking, and they didn't appear to be special in any way. Chapter 1539 the images seemed to depict a person digging holes before strenuously carrying massive objects into those holes. Every image was similar, except the colors were slightly different, and each image seemed to have a dragon shaped projection revolving around it, resonating with the countless dragon projections within the halo down below. None of the spectators were able to make sense of the images, and even Shrek Six Monsters and the friends and teachers who were closest to Tang Wulin had no idea what was happening. In that instant, Yuna felt as if she and Tang Wulin were the only two people left in the world as only she could tell what he was doing. An indescribable flurry of emotions swelled up in her heart, and she felt as if something had gotten stuck in her throat. She finally knew what he had been doing during his three year absence, and she finally understood why she had felt a sense of absolute trust and reliance toward him following his return. She gritted her teeth tightly to repress her own tears, but her heart had already completely melted into a puddle. You were right, Naya, you were always right, and so was I. He did something that we should have done. At this moment, Tang Wulin himself was also completely perplexed by what was happening around him. All he could sense were countless giant dragons around him, roaring with fondness and longing in their voices. The bracelet was the present that the giant dragons of the Dragon Valley had given him prior to his departure, but never did he think that it could be activated like this. At this moment, he could even feel a call from a distant alternate plane, where the dragons of the Dragon Valley were greeting him from afar. Meanwhile, Kyang Yu's Hanjing suddenly realized that he was unable to bring his coiling dragon staff staff up as he could clearly sense that the staff was trembling, and even the giant white dragon beneath him was also trembling. How was this possible? The giant dragon around his coiling dragon staff was an evil vanquishing dragon, which was a very special type of dragon that didn't even obey the dragon god. This type of dragon was born from nature and manifested from the righteous energy of heaven and earth, so it could be argued that it wasn't even a true dragon at all. Regardless of how powerful its enemy was, the evil vanquishing dragon would always display an unyielding spirit and often allow the wielder of the coiling dragon staff to unleash power beyond their normal capabilities. The unyielding will and the unyielding staff techniques and even the method to destroy the power of la
A bare staff. A peculiar silence settled over the entire stadium. My face mouth was gaped wide open, and he had no idea how to commentate further on this match. Meanwhile, Tang Wuling was reminiscing about what had just happened. He had clearly sensed that those giant dragons were calling out to him, and he seemed to have grasped onto something, but was unable to truly control it. It seemed that this was something that he could grab a hold of, but having missed that fleeting instant of opportunity, everything quickly disappeared. Kiang Yu's hanging battle armor domain and the dragon on his coiling dragon staff had both vanished, and Tang Wuling looked down to discover that the rainbow light within the brace that he was wearing had also disappeared, leaving only a transparent clear crystal behind. However, he could sense that this clear crystal was releasing a burst of suction force, seemingly absorbing something in the air. Only then did he realize that the present bestowed upon him by the giant dragons had such an effect. It was just that they had never told him how to use it, and he still didn't know it could be activated. However, it was clear that the effect had been activated due to an external stimulus on this occasion, and this was something that he would have to look into later. Right at this moment, an enraged voice rang out, You haven't won yet. Only then did Tang Wuling recall that he was in the midst of a battle with his love rival. This match was far too important for Kiangyu's hanging. Do you know was the most important part of his life, and he couldn't afford to lose her, so he had to win no matter what. Kiangyu's hanging rose to his feet as he spoke, using his coiling dragon staff as a crutch. In the instant that his domain had vanished, over half of his soul power had also disappeared, and even his battle armor had become dull and devoid of luster. Without the evil vanquishing dragon, his powers had been depleted by at least 60%. However, he still seemed to be full of confidence, and he reached out with his left hand, upon which a hexagonal object appeared in his grasp. This was a gray metal badge, and in the instant that it appeared, all of the light on the competition platform suddenly dimmed, as if they had suddenly transitioned into night. It seemed that the item was devouring all of the light. The badge then slowly rose up from Kiangyu's hanging's hand to hover in midair, and it quickly expanded to a diameter of around 10 meters with its front surface directly facing Tang Wuling. A sense of extreme peril instantly welled up in Tang Wuling's heart, and his mind began to tremble with inexplicable horror while his body seemed to have completely stiffened. A peculiar looking snake appeared at the center of the badge. The snake was of a dark gray color with a massive thumb, and right at this moment, it opened its eyes. As soon as Tang Wuling caught sight of those eyes, he was completely paralyzed, and even the energy circulating within his battle armor seemed to have been instantly sealed away. Those eyes were like a pair of crimson abysses that were sucking at his soul, and he could see that a projection that was around 100 meters tall had appeared behind the middle badge. This was a female figure with a head of giant snakes for hair, and her red eyes were filled with an aura of darkness. In Tang Wuling's eyes, it was as if everything around him had transformed into a crimson abyss. His body was already beginning to fall backward involuntarily, and a sinister smile appeared on Kai Yu's hanging face upon seeing this. You asked for it. You made me do this. It was said that this soul-sucking badge had been inherited from the goddess of sin, Medusa. This was a true divine weapon, and the ultimate trump card of the Kayangi family. Every time it was used, countless sacrificial offerings had to be made to maintain the wisp of Medusa's soul contained within the badge, and the Kayangi family had killed countless soul beasts in the past as offerings to it. Chapter 1540. In order to ensure his own victory, he had borrowed this soul sucking badge from the patriarch of his family. The patriarch had told him not to use the badge unless it was absolutely necessary, as its usage required the expenditure of a massive amount of resources. If it weren't for the fact that Kuyuno was extremely important to the spirit pagoda, there was no way he would have been able to gather enough sacrificial offerings to use the badge. Now that it had been used, his opponent's death was sealed. This divine weapon had never failed in the past. The hundred meter domain that Tang Wuling had just unleashed was far too fearsome. It hadn't inflicted any injuries upon him in the end, but in that instant, Kiangyu's hanging could sense that its power definitely wasn't inferior to that of Lima Duo. Fortunately for him, it seems that his opponent hadn't yet managed to fully master it. A threat like this had to be killed off right away, even if doing so would make the blue lightning tyrant dragon clan an enemy of the Kiangyu family. As such, as the soul sucking badge was brought out, even Kiangyu Dong finally furrowed his brows slightly, but made no effort to stop the match. After all, a threat like this had to be removed as soon as possible, or it could lead to immense trouble in the future. Fu Yuna's pupils also contracted slightly at the sight of the soul-sucking badge, but her expression then quickly returned to normal. The goddess of sin was only a third-rank goddess, even though the golden dragon king was only half of the dragon god, and Tang Wuling had only obtained a part of its bloodline. It was still a true first-rank god. Even if Kai Yu's hanging could defeat Tang Wuling with the soul-sucking badge, there was no way he would be able to kill Tang Wuling. If the golden dragon king and silver dragon king were that easy to kill, then the golden dragon king wouldn't have been sealed in the divine realm, and the silver dragon king wouldn't have gotten away. At this moment, Tang Wuling felt as if he were about to go insane. His soul was gradually stiffening, and his mind had also become completely drained of spiritual power. Both his soul core and dragon core seemed to have been fossilized, and he was literally crumbling away from the inside. No matter how hard he tried, he was unable to shake this unbearable feeling, and he wanted to yell with all his might, but simply couldn't find his voice. Right at this moment, something within his mind seemed to activate, and in the next instant, a burst of golden light radiated forth, basking his crumbling body in gentle golden warmth. Tang Wuling's mind almost instantly returned to normal, and a voice that seemed to belong to his father rang out in his heart. Sinful godly power shouldn't exist in this world. In the next instant, he fully regained his consciousness. In the eyes of Kiangyu's hanging, Tang Wuling's life force was rapidly fading from the effect of the soul sucking badge, and his body was gradually turning gray. According to historical records, those targeted by the soul sucking badge would quickly be turned to stone, then disintegrating to dust after their life force had been completely depleted. Die. This is what you get for trying to take my woman. However, right at this moment, Tang Wuling's eyes suddenly lit up, and a plume of rainy surged back from his body, transforming into the projection of a female head that was screeching with horror. Immediately thereafter, a burst of golden light erupted from Tang Wuling's right hand, transforming into a massive golden trident. Tang Wuling then cast his gaze toward the dumbstruck Kiangyu's hanging, and his mocking expression seemed to be saying, "You're not the only one with a divine weapon. My father is a god." The golden trident was slashed through the air like lightning, unleashing a burst of peerlessly radiant golden light. No. Kiangyu's hanging and Kiangyu Dongfan yelled in unison, but neither of them could stop what was happening. The giant golden trident swept through the air, and the soul sucking badge exploded into countless pieces. Golden light surged through the air, completely eradicating the gray mist and leaving no trace behind. Dazzling golden light enveloped Tang Wuling's entire body, and he descended onto the ground. All of a sudden, his vision blurred, and he was suddenly thrust into a golden world. Everything around him was completely golden, and an authoritative voice rang out in his mind. The second trial of the sea god begins now. The sea god's trident seemed to have been activated by the soul sucking badge, and Tang Wuling didn't know whether he should laugh or cry. He was still in the middle of a battle. Wouldn't he automatically lose the match if he were to suddenly disappear? He couldn't afford to lose. He had to win, both for Gu Yue and for the plan devised by the Tang Sect and Shrek Academy. However, there was nothing that he could do. He had already been dragged into this space, and the only ways he could get out were either to complete the trial or failed the trial. He took a deep breath to repress his own agitation and focused on resolving this issue as soon as possible. He looked around him to find nothing but boundless golden light in all directions. The first trial seemed to have been a test of willpower, so what was the second trial going to be? After waiting for a long while, everything remained completely unchanged, and Tang Wuling sat down with his legs crossed to experience everything around him. On this occasion, he had retained all of his powers, and with his sharp senses, he was confident that he would immediately be able to react if something were to happen. Right at this moment, a beam of bright light suddenly appeared in his heart without any warning. Tang Wuling was given a fright and immediately sprang to his feet, thinking